I want to introduce you to a new tool used to help figure out if a reaction is at equilibrium or not. It's called the reaction quotient. And I'm going to get right into an example to show you how it works. We have hydrogen fluoride decomposing to make hydrogen and fluorine gas, and you're given an equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. During this reaction, the concentrations of the three gases are measured. And the question is, is the system at equilibrium? And then a follow-up question, if it's not at equilibrium, what's going to happen to the reaction to get to equilibrium? Will it favor the forward reaction to make more hydrogen and fluorine? Or will it favor the reverse reaction in order to make more hydrogen fluoride? So to figure out if we're at equilibrium or not, I'm going to set up an equilibrium expression like we've been doing for a while now. I'm going to say concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of fluorine all over the concentration of the hydrogen fluoride squared. But I'm not going to set that equal to K. I'm going to set that equal to Q. Q is our reaction quotient. It's a test to see whether we're at equilibrium or not. So I'm going to plug in the values that I'm given. My concentration of hydrogen is 0.00019 molar. My concentration of fluorine is 0.00012 molar. And I'm going to divide by my concentration of hydrogen fluoride, which is 0.00034 molar squared. And when I solve for that, I get a Q value equal to 0.1. Nine, seven. Now we've been given a k for this. We know that k should be 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4. q does not equal k. So we know that we're not at equilibrium. If we were at equilibrium, all of these concentrations would have plugged in and given me my constant. But because they don't, we know we're not at equilibrium. So the second part of this question is, if we're not at equilibrium, which way will the reaction shift in order to attain equilibrium? Well, what we found here is that our Q value is bigger than our K value. Well then, in order to reach equilibrium, Q has got to get smaller. How do you get Q smaller? Well, you reduce the top of your fraction and you increase the bottom of your fraction. How do you decrease the top of your fraction and increase the bottom of your fraction? You shift your reaction back to the left. That consumes the hydrogen and fluorine and produces more hydrogen fluoride. So because Q is bigger than K, our reaction is going to shift to the left. So as a review, if Q equals K, we're at equilibrium. If Q is bigger than K, the reaction will shift to the left. And then hopefully it makes sense that if Q is smaller than K, the reaction would then shift to the right. To answer our next question, we're going to have to rely on another white dude. Now, unlike the other members of the long string of white dudes that we've talked about in this course, this white dude is still alive. This guy is vanilla ice, and we're going to use an ice chart to help solve this problem. We know this reaction is not at equilibrium, and we know that it will shift to the left in order to achieve equilibrium. The question with which we will invoke vanilla ice's name is, what will the concentrations be of each of these gases once equilibrium is achieved? So what we can do now is we can set up an ICE chart. ICE is an acronym that means initial, change, and equilibrium. We can use the ICE chart to track what's happening to the concentration of all my gases during the reaction. I can look at the HF, the H2, and the F2 through this process. Now I know the HF is starting out with a concentration of 0 0.00034. I know the hydrogen is starting out with a concentration of 0 0.00019. And I know the fluorine is starting out with a concentration of 0 0.00012. So those are the initial concentrations. Now let's talk about change. Well, we said that the reaction is going to shift to the left. That means my products, the hydrogen and the fluorine, are going to decrease and the HF is actually going to increase. So I'm going to say the fluorine is going to decrease by some amount. I'll call that X. Well, if we look at our balanced equation, the fluorine and the hydrogen react in a one-to-one -one ratio. So however much the fluorine decreases, the hydrogen will decrease by the same amount. The hydrogen fluoride reacts at a two-to-one ratio with the hydrogen and the fluorine. So if the hydrogen and fluorine are decreasing, the hydrogen fluoride must increase, but it's going to increase at a rate of 2x, 
because of the two to one to one ratios in the balanced equation. This means at equilibrium, my HF will equal 0 0.00034 plus 2x. The hydrogen will be 0 0.00019 minus x. And the fluorine will be 0 0.00012 minus x. So at equilibrium, my KEQ will equal the concentration of my products, 0 0.00019 minus x times 0 0.00012 minus x all over my reactant 0 0.00034 plus 2x squared. And at equilibrium, we know the constant. We know this equals 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4. So I can set this whole thing to 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4. I haven't been in an algebra class since the early 90s, so I'm going to jump right to Wolfram Alpha, and I'm going to graph this statement that we made. You can do this on your graphing calculator as well. We said 0 0.00019 minus x times 0 0.00012 minus x, and then divide that by 0 0.00034 plus 2x squared. That whole thing equaled our equilibrium constant, which was 2.3 times 10 raised to the negative 4 power. On your calculator, what you could do is you could say y equals this side, and then set another y equals to this side. Oh, I just saw I put a comma. I should put a period there. And then if you graph those two equations, you can find where they intersect, and that will give you your result. Wolfram Alpha gives me this. I can see these two terms here. This times this divided by that equals a constant. Good. Here are some alternative forms. And then here are my two solutions. We have two possible solutions for x. 0 0.00012 or 0 0.00019. If you look at your equations, 0 0.00019 doesn't make sense because if you tried to plug that into this statement right here, you would get a negative number and you can't have a negative concentration. So I'm going to use 0 0.00012 as the correct answer, and not the 0 0.00019. So the question was asking, what is the equilibrium concentrations? Well, we said that the HF is going to equal 0 0.00034 plus 2x. So that means that I get a concentration of HF of 5.0. 7, 8 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. We said the H2 is going to be 0 0.00019 minus x. So that's going to be 7.11 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. And we said that the F2 was going to equal 0 0.00012 minus x. Well, our x is basically 0 0.0012, so this is going to be pretty much a zero. I get 1.08 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. Now, this makes sense because our k value is much smaller than 1, so our equilibrium should be favored to the left. And so I'm making more of my reactant and less of my product.